Hey guys, just going to be bringing the good news on the chat apps. Just a warning ahead of time like we normally do. Uh, people screaming things, yelling things, and if there's any sexual content and whatnot, I'll block out the nudity. But yeah, just a warning ahead of time. So let's just go preach the gospel. We're running, out of, we're running out of time and we're living in the last days. Christ is right around the corner. The return of the king is coming for all sin, the wrath of God. We're running out of time. All of us are destined due for a day of death. That is one thing that is for sure that we all have to go through is death. We will die. And nobody wants to think about death. Nobody wants to dwell on it or have any thoughts about it because they're not right with God. But you don't have to be afraid of death. You don't have to be afraid to die because the Savior loves you. Even the Spirit of God will come on here and tell you that if you just call out to Him, you just believe, if you give in to Him, you don't have to keep coming on here. You don't have to keep giving into lust. You don't have to keep on those chains bound to adultery and fornication on these chat apps. You can give in to the one who loves you, the one who will never leave you, never forsake you, the one who will actually do stuff for you. This world will never do anything for you. These chat apps will never do anything for you. All you get is these fake things, just like the fake person that's behind you. Imagine what the life is that you have to where you come on here and all you do is just put a screen up so people can go after lust and adultery. That's sad. You can have more to life than that. You know that. All you have to do is just repent and believe. And if you give in to Christ, he will forgive you. But he matches me up with you every single day just to remind you that you will have to give an account. What's the odds of that? Only God can do that. Over 3 million people, and yet I come and connect with you every single day to remind you that you will have to give an account for all your works, for all that you do, for aiding people in the lust and in the fornication and adultery. But if you repent, if you believe, he is just to forgive and you will be saved. And that's just what it is. It's a reprobate mind. This world is reprobate. We're in the living in the last days. And honestly, this is why the tribulation is coming. This is why the wrath of God is coming. It's coming because of the sin, because of all the wickedness that men and women choose to go after. They know the right, they know right from wrong, but yet they choose to go after wrong. They choose to go after sin. And that's why this world is how it is. That's why they're so hurt, why they're so broken. And yet Christ is still right there. God is still right there because he hasn't given up. He's the true heavenly father. He's the good shepherd. He's the only one that will continue to go to the ends with you and be there with his hands out. Literally this way, not this way, because he gave his life for us. He's there to aid us for us and all the anxiety and all the depression and all the pain, no matter what it is for the sin. And only he can do that. It's if you truly seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be answered. If you ask, you will receive. That's what it is, because he's he's the loving father. And that's Matthew chapter seven, Matthew chapter seven, verse seven and eight. Ex specifically explains to us that if we seek after him we will find the truth and that's why when we die and we face god there's going to be nothing left to say he's going to give us what we want what we truly go after and if it's just after lust if it's just after fornication not ca caring about the truth if we just want to come on these chat apps just want to live in sin then he's going to give us that we're going to have to give an account life itself tells us that there's a wage that there's consequences and, and that's what it is, even in the heart, even in the hearts of men, because God wrote that law on our hearts, but yet they don't want to embrace it. They'd rather deny it and deny the truth, but yet they know it in their heart. And that's why even when they're in trouble and even when they're going through pain and a hardship, they still try and call out to God. But it's only in that time. It's only in that time when they truly, truly need him. It's never in that time where, you know, they just want to give thanks or truly want to thank him. But that's what it is. Everybody's going to try and call out to him. The difference is, is it might be too late by then to call out to him now while you have a chance. Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait. Don't wait before it's too late where you step into eternity and then judgment's already been set. Just step over now. Call out to him now. Be changed now and you're saved. That's it. That's what it is. It's just by the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says that by faith you are saved. It's not by works because Christ already did the work for us. It's his blood that was shed on the cross for us because it's by the blood of God himself of which we're made pure, which we're made clean. It's only by the blood of Christ. It's only by the one who could walk the perfect sinless life and yet still aid us, be there for us, for our temptations, for all our struggles, but yet give his life for us so we can now know the Father. That's what it is. It's about bringing us back to the Father. He is the veil that was torn to bring us to the Father. So now that holy of holy places open to all 
all of us if we go through Christ. Because it says in John chapter 14, verse 6, he says that I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man will come to the Father but by me. And that's the truth, and we'll see it today. We'll see it in the end days. Nobody's going go to go to, to, to the Father to heaven except by the Son. And that's today. Nobody knows the Father. Nobody has a relationship with the Father. No one's life's truly changed. No one has aid through sin except by the Son. And, and that's what it is. You can know that. You can have that. And know that your life has purpose, it has meaning, it has value, you have a calling. This world will try and tell you that you're nothing, that you're just a little particle on um, spinning around in, in a uh, universe that means absolutely non nothing with the possibility of asteroids and nuclear attacks and, and wars and all this fear. And really, that's not it at all. God has everything in complete control, but they don't want you to know that. They want you to be afraid. They want you to fear. They want you to be in control. Because it's the enemy. The enemy is what controls everything. But God is just saying, no, he has everything in his hands. Everything works perfectly together, designed. Everything's going according to his word. That's why we're living in these last days. Everything that he said, Matthew 24 and Luke 21, Mark 13, these exact things, earthquakes, famines, pestilences, wars, rumors of wars, everything. The mark of the beast right around the corner. Mask, one minute away from Mark. Can't buy, sell, or trade without your mask on. All of it. It's the quantum dot tattoo, that RFID chip scanning of the right hand. It's all indoctrination, and it's all right there, but nobody can see it because they don't know God. They don't have eyes to see that spiritual discernment. They might kind of have an idea that there's something wrong, but they don't truly know. They tr can't truly see because they don't know God. They don't have eyes to see, but it's all right there. It's all the indoctrination. That's why they have you stand six feet apart. It's not seven. It's not eight. It's to get the six, 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 but you can't see because you don't know the truth. But you can know the truth. If you seek, you will find. That's what it comes down to. If you truly want to know the value of life, if you truly want to know the purpose of life, the meaning of life, why you were called, why we have to die, all we have to do is just call out to him. The lady who had an issue with blood flow, she pushed her way through the pile. She said that if I could just touch his garment, she reached out to him and she touched him. She believed it was the faith. He turned around. And he said, daughter, it was your faith that made you right. Your faith has healed you. She pushed her way through. She reached out and she believed and she was healed. That's what it takes. All you have to do is just repent, believe, and call upon him. And that's it. That's what it is. It's just acknowledging him. If we just acknowledge him for dying for those sins, for taking that punishment for us, and believe, we're saved. And that's it. Just repent and believe. Call out to him. You will be saved. He will give you eyes to see. He will be there to aid you, to guide you. You can cast it upon him. And he's the only one who can help you. I'll say that firsthand because I've been around from atheism, Buddhist, Hindu. It doesn't matter from all the psychedelics. None of it's true. None of it's true. Nothing can ever help you. There's no standard in it. There's no base from it. You just have to truly want to know the truth. If you truly see, Christ will draw you in. You have to want to know the truth, but you have to also humble yourself. You have to also accept accept it and accept what he's done for us but if you truly knock and go after him and seek you will find him and that's what it is it's what it is it's just the truth it's just the truth of calling out to him and we can be saved we can be saved so it's that it's that narrow gate that narrow path as though that world is on that bride that bride path that leads to that destruction, to damnation, because it's easy. Anybody can just live in sin, walk the ways of this world, deny God, and continue just living their merry little life, pretending that nothing's wrong, pretending that they have no purpose, no value, and that they were just evolved when all the facts prove otherwise. Or you can be a true man and woman and, and walk in God, live in God in love, and walk the opposite way, and walk the walk against the grain because this world will try and tell you that love is love but love is not love they have no standard for love they steal from our standard they'll try and tell you that coming on here and touching yourself and and get putting it in front of little kids and elderly people that that's love but that's not love god is love first john chapter 4 verse 8 says that god is love and it's by everything that he had proven for us on the cross at calvary He says, many will come to me on that day. Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons and do marvelous works in your name? And he will say, turn from me, for I never knew you.
So it's about knowing him, building that true relationship with him through the son. But you can only have that relationship with the father through the son. That's the thing. He's the mediator. He's the one who paid for the consequences that of that sin, took that wrath and condemnation for us, separated from the father, came off his throne when we didn't deserve it. And yet he's the only one who's going to reign forever, have glory, have praise forever. It's his name above every name. And it's every knee that will bow. Every tongue will confess. So you might as well do it now. And we're running out of time. That's what it is. But you can have the truth. You can know the truth and have that relationship with the Father. Just think about that. Prophesy in the name. Cast out demons. Do marvelous works. And I'll say, turn for me for I never knew you because it's not well done. It's well done, good and faithful servant. It's by faith. It's by the blood of Christ alone. It's just by believing. It's just like the man with leprosy. He said, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. He said, I'm willing. That's what it is. It's by believing. And that's what they'll do. They'll mock, they'll persecute, they can laugh, but in those end days, they will for surely bow a knee. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 4 says that scoffers will come in those last days saying, where is this God? They'll laugh, but the thing is, is when they're in trouble and when they're hurt, they'll still call out to him. And, and they can try and disprove it, but they never can. They've been trying to disprove it for years and years and years, and they never can because it's the infallible word of God. And only God, the true living God, will come on here when could be doing anything else but through the spirit of god he'll be on here trying to call out to his people working through his people calling out to him say hey come to me all of you who are heavy laden weak and burdened i will give you rest because there's only true rest in the one who can give rest which is christ nobody else can give you rest this word world can't give you rest these false prophets can't give you rest no other false fake religion can give you rest only the true god of rest the one who created it which is christ in the midst of the storm when the world is in utter chaos because they're not founded in the rock which is christ they're tossed to and fro they're afraid they have fear you don't have to have fear all you have to do is just believe if you just call out to him, you believe, you will be saved, you'll have that Holy Spirit, you won't have fear anymore. This world's in fear because they don't, they're tossed to and from. They don't know the creator. They don't know the savior. They deny the truth. They hate the savior. They hate good. They love sin. So because of that, they're in anxiety all day. They, they don't know the truth. They wander about worried. They don't, they're not firmly rooted in the rock. So they get tossed to and fro. And that's what it is by different doctrines. Oh, I believe this over here. I could believe this over here. I'm not sure over this. I get hurt over here. Oh, you hurt my feelings over here. Don't say this. Don't say that. They're so adapted to this world that even by a mere uh, word that somebody says affects them. They don't have thick skin because it's all outwardly. They're not changed inwardly because if they were truly changed inwardly, they would see, they would have eyes to see. And that would be it. You would see that it, it is more than what we see on the outward, even though everything that we see proves and points to a creator, especially in these last days, especially what we're living in and what's going on in this world. We're running out of time. It all just comes down to death. That's the elephant in the room. That's what people don't want to talk about. They don't want to talk about death. I'm here to talk about it because I'm not afraid because I know the Savior. And the Savior's right there saying that if you just believe on me, it's appointed for men to die once. That's why we have to die is because of sin. We all have to do it. We all do. But he says, truly, if you believe on me, you will be saved. And that's just what it is. It's just by believing. He did everything for us. We're all going to die. But the difference is, is when I die and I stand in front of God and I have to face all my sins, in comes Christ and the blood of Christ covers all my sins. And all that's left is the good works and the righteousness. And God can say, you're free to go because somebody's paid your fines. You've accepted it. And that's all it is. It's just accepting it, accepting the sacrifice of the one who paid for the sins of the world. And you'll be saved. And that's it. Hey, God bless you. Running out of time. Wrath of God's right around the corner is coming for all sin, for all sin and wickedness. If you call out to him, if you believe, you will be saved. You will be saved, but you're running out of time. You're running out of time. You don't know when you're going to die. You can know your true meaning, your true purpose, your true value. If you just call out to God, that's all it takes. Just call out to him. Just believe. You're running out of time. I beg you. I beg you. Your life means it has purpose. It has value. Your soul will be in hell for all of eternity if you do not accept the sacrifice of Christ. There is a consequence. There is a wage. And I'm here to warn you about that, how the seriousness of it. We sin against a holy God. 
we deserve the, the lake of fire and brimstone. That's what it is. It wasn't created for us. It was created for the devil and for his demons. The difference is we chose to go after sin. We choose to go after that. So because of that, we have to pay that consequence if we don't accept the sacrifice of it. There has to be bloodshed. There has to be a payment. Christ paid that payment. If we don't accept that, yeah, the world just doesn't want to hear it. They don't want to have it. So they're going to have to endure it. You're going to have to endure that sin then. If you reject that sacrifice, if you reject that holy gift, you're going to have that blood on your hands. You're going to have your own blood on your own hands. You're going to have to pay for those wages, those sin. That means eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth separated from God for all of eternity. That means after 300 billion years, that's just the beginning and you're stuck there. That sucks. This way you think this life is a joke, 70, 80 years, maybe if you're lucky. There's consequences here. There's wages. Everything that God has said is trying to warn you, trying to show you that it's not a joke, that it wasn't supposed to be like this, why we have to die, why there's so much pain. Nobody has the truth except for Christ. Everything that he said in the word of God is coming true right now, and people still just don't want to see it. It, it baffles me. It, it, it absolutely baffles me. So there's going to be nothing left to say regardless. There's... There's going to be nothing left to say if you don't even care to want to know the truth, if you don't even seek. How many times have you heard the gospel, the message of repentance, and yet you still don't believe, you still deny? You're going to have to face him. Embrace it then. Embrace it. He's going to bring this up. He's going to show you. Remember this this time. Remember it. Take those sins then. Embrace it. But you can be saved. You can be saved. You don't have to live coming on here, going after lust. You can be saved. There's more to life than this. You have purpose. You have value. You don't have to listen to the world. You don't have to listen to the world that says you're nothing. You listen to God who says he died for you. Come to me, all of you. He will give you rest. Only by the true God could do that. And he's right there, but we're running out of time. Just call out to him. Just believe. If you just believe, you'll be saved. That's what it is. Just believe. You'll be saved. You're going to have to give an account. All of us. All of us are going to have to give an account. Hey, what did you do that one time? That one time you heard the message of the gospel. God bless you, bro. It's good to see you again. God bless you. And we'll be saved. I don't, you know, baffles me, baffles me. You could literally have everything right in front of people's faces and yet they still don't want to see it. You could hold up a red sheet of paper and they'd be like, oh, I think it's blue because they just don't want to see it. They just don't have those spiritual eyes of discernment. But he will give you that if you want to know the truth, if you want to know your meaning. Everyone I see on here is just so depressed, so miserable, living in anxiety, living in pain calling out to God and he will save you. That's all it takes. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to live in anxiety. You don't have to live trying to please people. You can live the, for the one who's already pleased in you if you call out to him. You don't have to be bound on here, bound to lust, bound to fornication, bound trying to be cool, trying to make make other people feel good, trying to impress other people. You don't have to do that. You don't have to come on here and try and pretend that you're asleep and try and be cool. There's nothing cool about that. You don't have to. You walk, anybody could do what the world does and be a fool, but can you be a true man and woman, walk in God, walk in love? That's what it really is. That's what it's going to come down to. You're going to have to give an account. You're going to have to give a wage. Even on the chat apps, you can't get away from God. Christ sees everything. He knows all things. You're going to have to give an account, and that sucks. That sucks, but it won't suck if we repent. If we repent, if we believe and call out to him, he is just to forgive because he's a true, just, righteous God who already paid for that consequence. But if we want to deny him, if we want to hate him, if we want to just live in sin, live in wickedness, then that sucks for us. You're going to have to embrace it, embrace those sins. It's one thing like if you don't really know, but when you have all the standard evidence, all the physical evidence, all the spiritual evidence, the Bible prophecy, and yet you still deny, still don't want to know the truth, then embrace it. Embrace the sins when it comes down to it. It's sad. It's really sad. There comes a point where God just says, okay, fine. You don't want it. You don't want it. Have at it. And we're already here. We're already here. It's sad. We're in these last days. The church is about to leave. People just don't want to hear the message of the gospel anymore. They have the reprobate minds, wicked hearts. They love sin. They could know that if they just give in to Christ, if they just call out to God, he will save them. He is just to forgive. He is the true living God who is there to aid them. And, and nobody else will do that for you. And you don't have to be depressed coming on here, living in sin, trying to 
have something to entertain you. Give in to the one who will truly entertain you, who is never boring, who it takes all of eternity to get to know him. The world can never do that. This world is boring. This world is the same thing over and over and over and over. It's sin. Sin, 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 sin. Hey, God bless you, bro. But God is new every single day. It's his new mercies every single day. He's the same today, tomorrow, and the yesterday. But it's the new it's the new adventure in him every day. It's getting to know him more and more every day. And you can know that. You can have your purpose. You can have your meaning. If you just call out to him, if you just give in to him, Lord, Lord, help me believe. Help me. I call out to you. You will be saved. Hey, God bless you, man. I hope I just pray that you would repent. Pray that you, you pray for your soul. Pray for the soul of everybody on here. You know, there's more to life than this. There's more to life than chat apps. There's more to life than what this world shows. There's more to life than trying to act cool. This life is Christ and he is the way. And you just call out to him. If you just give in to him, you'll be saved.